the next few minutes, we're going to talk about everything in the world. That's because we're talking about, wait for it, <laughs> geography. Geography is what we call the study of the world. Though in ancient Greece, 2000 years ago, they just started calling it geographia, which means the same thing, but is much easier to say. So we borrow the word from those first Greek world lovers. They won't mind, they're dead now. To understand why they use this name, you have to either speak Greek or be smart, or both. <laughs> Let's break this word apart and see what we can learn. This first part is geo. In Greek, geo is a root word that refers to the world or the earth. That's easy enough, right? The other half is just a tad trickier. The suffix word graphi is a more modern English twist on the original Greek and Latin graphia. And it kind of sounds like a word we use in English today, graph. A graph is something we use to help describe or no, not giraffe, I said graph. Someone get that giraffe out of here. A graph is something we use to help describe or show an idea or information. Graph can be pictures or data on a table or a chart. Graphy means writing about something, describing something, showing something, or demonstrating something. Today, we use a dump load of words that use the suffix graphy. Photography, for instance, photography. It includes the Greek word photo, which means light, followed by graphy. So your photographs are like light graphs. Pictures of light, I guess. What else is there? There's choreography. Cinematography. Oceanography. Biography. Calligraphy. Cartography. Anyway, you get the point. I bet you could take any of these words and chop them in two. Then you could look up the Greek translation and figure out what the Greeks meant when they were handing out names. Based on these definitions, this means geography is a science that seeks to help describe or show the world. Geography has so many different elements and it can be difficult to keep them all straight. In general, however, it's safe to put most of the elements of geography into one of two distinct categories, physical geography and human geography. Or if we want to keep with our fancy Greek theme, we can say physiography and anthropogeography. Actually, on second thought, those are pretty tough words. Let's just stick with physical and human geography. First, let's talk about physical geography. Unsurprisingly, physical geography deals with the physical aspects of the earth. You know, things like rivers, lakes, hills, and valleys. Everything from the mountains, to the prairies, to the oceans white with foam. God bless physical geography. It describes our home sweet home. There are several different subcategories of physical geography. Some of the more well-known parts include hydrology, which is the study of water in our Earth cycle, or climatology, which is the study of the Earth's climate. We'll look more closely at some of these elements of physical geography in the future. For now, just assume that if it's part of physical Earth, then there's probably a Greek word that describes the study of that thing. Human geography, on the other hand, focuses primarily on studying societies or groups of people and relationships between people in those groups. Essentially, it's anything that has to do with people who live on this planet. People, not giraffes. It includes the study of different human cultures, the study of the economy, history, political science, and more. If it has to do with describing humans who live on the earth, where they live, or how they interact with each other, then it's likely part of human geography. Now, if you really want to understand this world, 
You have to look at both physical and human geography. All of human history has literally involved human beings like us being on this planet, except for like 500 astronauts. Everything that we do is tied in some way to the natural world we're living in. Governments are based on political control over sections of the land. Economies are based on natural resources available in particular areas. Populations grow in areas with access to certain nice features like water and fertile soil to grow food and animals who are less likely to eat you. Like my hippie grandma always says, we're all connected, man. <laughs> Because of this, many geographies use a term that looks at both physical and human geography at the same time. They call it integrated geography. Integrated geography always considers the relationship between the planet and the humans who live on it. It shows how our physical planet has a strong influence on humans and at the same time, how we humans have a strong influence on our physical planet. Don't forget. We're all connected, man. Now exhale into Downward Giraffe. You might not realize it yet, but it's super important to study and understand geography. Understanding different parts of geography gives us something called global awareness. Global awareness is critical to the success of people and communities in the world we live in today. By studying geography, you're able to do useful things like locate where places are on a map. By studying geography, you'll know how to identify the different people, places, countries, and cultures of the world. Then, when you hear about something that's happening in some faraway land, you won't feel stupid because you actually understand what's happening and you can be connected to the world. By studying geography, we become more useful and better contribute to the progress of mankind and planet Earth. So join us on our journey of geography. I promise you won't regret it. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Jenny from Engage Global Storytelling. Keep coming back each week to see what else we have in store for you to help you learn about geography.